Ephesians 6, 4 says, fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. Now, what could that mean when you were a kid and you said, why, you told me to do something. Why did you tell me to do that? And, and your parent goes, because I told you so. Let me just tell you, that's not an answer. <laughs> you might not always have the time to give them the full big answer, but it's a little disrespectful to just say, don't ask any questions. Just do it because I said it. That's not a healthy relationship. And you might not be able to always explain it all, but if you give them enough times when you do, then you just say, look, I'll explain it to you later. We just don't have the time right now, but I'll tell you. And you better hope you say, I don't know why, because it's just how we've always done it. <laughs> That's not a good sign either. <laughs> Nobody ever said that in church. <laughs> Fathers, don't provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Start out by saying, I am your ally, child, young person, whatever. If you're teaching in, in the children's ministry, they're learning very differently than we did. Anybody say amen to that? So listen, I just a couple of verses here to, to, to talk about this idea of we have increasing... God has increasing expectations of us the longer we're serving him, just like you would with your children. We're his children. And if you're 8, you have different expectations from the parents than if you're 18 or 28. Fair? Okay? I think I'm setting you up, don't you? So as we mature in the Lord, he doesn't want us still drinking milk. He wants us eating meat, and he wants us confronting difficult situations. And if we don't progress, it's on us. In the business world, they say, if you don't innovate, your business will die. So if you don't keep looking for new ways and better ways of doing things, someone else will. And if you're selling clothes in a retail store, Amazon just took all your business. Because people can get it faster. They don't have to drive to the mall, hassle with the parking. It's cheaper. And, and if for some reason you don't like it, they'll take it back. No problem. Well, man, you can't keep your head in the sand about these things. Same with the church. We better be intentional about reaching the young people in a way they can receive it. Not to water down the word. Here it is. But to present it in a way, fluently, that they can understand the truth in their vernacular, in their dialect. Zacharias, is that, you know, he's in the temple. You know this is John the Baptist's father. But before he had the baby, he's in the temple. And he says to Gabriel, the angel, how shall I know this is true, what you just told me? How shall I know that my wife is going to give birth? You all know what I'm talking about, right? I don't have to unpack it too much. For I'm an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And Gabriel said, well, you know what? Because you didn't believe it, you're not going to speak between now and when he's born. He's going to be a prophet. He's going to be the mouthpiece of God. And because you didn't believe it, your mouth is going to be shut. Just to remind you that you've been praying for this. You've been praying. You're a priest. Not a newbie. You're a priest. And you're not believing? I came here on assignment. I'm writing you up. You got a ticket. <laughs> Points on your license. Your insurance premium is going up. Geico, help me, Geico. See, that's just rough. But it's really not. You wouldn't want it any other way. You wouldn't want somebody up here standing who's a novice. Because the church is full of vulnerable people. And he loves you enough to make sure these people are tested and tried. Not perfect. But pursuing God. Men and women after God's own heart. So... It, the, the, the response was not good by the angel. You're going to be cut off. But then in the same chapter, in verse 34 of the same chapter, he comes to Mary and, said to the, and Mary then says to the angel, but how can this be since I don't know a man? Doesn't this look like a very similar answer? So what's different? She's 14. I don't know. She's a teenager. She's not a priest. She didn't pray. God, make me pregnant miraculously. <laughs> so she's got a different set of facts here. And she's young and she's immature, so he doesn't cu he cuts her slack because different situation. But we get real religious, and we think everything has to fit in this nice, neat little box. That's not a good way to live. I'll leave that at that one. I quoted this one earlier, Galatians 4. Timeless truth for turbulent times. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son into the world, born of a woman, subject to the law. So he was just like us. He could have sinned, born of a woman, natural, of the law, subject to the same rules and regulations, went through 33 years and never had one violation. Amazing. 
to free people who, just like those who were subject to the law, ultimately he wanted us all to be, say it with me, okay, adopted as sons and daughters. So as you look around, this is your family. If I could just say it that way, this is your family. He wanted us to be adopted as sons and daughters and mix it up with the people that we're in church with especially because this is a very special thing. When the body of Christ comes together, we need each other, okay? We need each other. We hold each other accountable. We want to be mentoring people, and we want to be mentored by people who are, 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 have more insight in whatever area that is. It's not just an age thing. It's a gifting thing. If people are operating in their gift, they could teach you a lot, and they could also impart to you. So I guess you're getting the point. We're adopted as sons and daughters because you're now part of God's family. He sent his spirit, the spirit of his son, into our hearts, and the spirit calls out, Abba, Father. We were singing about that this morning. We will always sing about that because whatever the world says is our identity is not perfectly aligned with what God says is our identity. We have to always keep asking, show me what you see about me. Show me what you see about my boss, about the people who work for me, who I'm having such a hard time. It's not easy to fire somebody when you're a Christian. <laughs> Some of them have had to do this. You could be doing them a favor by firing them. Because you're not enabling them to continue in a job that they're not qualified for. Selah. Verse 7 of Galatians 4 says, you no longer have to live as a slave. Hallelujah. Anybody who's been addicted knows what that's like. You no longer have to live as a slave, but we were all slaves to sin, so whether you were addicted or not isn't the issue. You're a slave to something, and Paul said, the, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing. This is the, the condition of every human being. And he was saved. He was a leader in the church, and he was saying that, right? So it's not like we fully arrive, but we have more tools in the toolbox, and we have each other to help each other and testify. And when you hear somebody else walk through a difficult situation, it builds your faith. And if you're getting prayer, make sure everybody around you believes that you can get healed. <laughs> but I, I just I backed. I, I went a little too fast. You no longer have to live as a slave because you're a child of God. And since you are his child, God guarantees an inheritance is waiting for you. Now, that sounds really good. Because it is. But it's hard to grasp it at the deepest level of our hearts. That we're really children of God and that we have an inheritance. Would anybody agree, based on your experience, that knowing the Father's love at the deepest level has not been an easy task? Hearing it and, and knowing that you could pray for somebody else, but you have less faith for yourself because you still know all the mistakes you made and nobody knows all the mistakes you made like you do. <laughs> nobody can condemn you bigger than you can. But God's saying, no, you're forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far I've removed your transgressions from you. So why are you cursing yourself with something I'm not even saying over you anymore? Tell that accuser to shut up. I'm going to listen to the word of God about who I am and my identity in Christ. And this says, no longer to live as a slave because now I'm a child of God. And as a child, I have an inheritance that's waiting. I'm Mephibosheth. And I get to sit at the table with the king. Not because I earned it. Because he loves me. Not because you did anything to make him love you. Just because he's a good God. You can't earn his love. But you can please him in the way you live your life. Amen.